Hello and welcome to the section of the Chemistry Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to continue learning how to balance these redox reactions. And I think with what we've done so far, I've probably convinced you that some of these redox reactions can be difficult to balance without a real formal process. Um, so instead of thinking about it as, oh my gosh, this is a really long process, it's so hard, think of it as, okay, at least I've got a bulletproof technique that is laid out before me. Because if you didn't have this bulletproof technique, then you would literally just be guessing on what your coefficients are everywhere, and you would literally be circling around and around trying to get it to balance, and you would just be lost. So here we have a dedicated method. I know that it looks like a lot of steps, but that's partly because I took the previous example really slowly. So what we're going to do now and in the next several lessons is we're going to work and solve and, and balance several more of these redox reactions in acid solution, acidic solution. We're going to go a little bit faster than we did in the previous lesson because you should understand the framework now. But we're still going to write the steps down. We're still going to explicitly show everything uh, because I think that's the easiest way to teach you this. Now notice what I've done here. I've rewritten the steps on the board in kind of a shorthand notation. So we kind of condense the, the steps into one little board. I'm going to leave this on the board for all of the problems that we're going to do here. And so we'll be going back and forth just kind of drilling this in your head. Part of the challenge here is knowing what to do. The other part is trying to remember it. You know, when you're on a test, you don't have to, to refer to this list. Once you work enough of these problems, then this will just make sense to you and you'll just know what to do. So let's bang through really quick how we're going to do this. First, we're going to write the equation as a net ionic uh, reaction. It's almost always done for you, but that is step one. And then we're going to make two half reactions. We split up the ions and, until they match on the left and the right. And then we're going to balance the atoms on those half reactions with everything except for hydrogen and oxygen. We're not going to touch those. But in the next step, we're going to balance the oxygen by adding water to whatever side we need with however many moles of it that we need to balance the oxygen. Then we're going to balance hydrogen by adding these hydrogen ions to both sides, uh, however many we need. And the reason we're adding hydrogen ions is because we're saying that these reactions are occurring in acidic solution. So we have these extra hydrogen ions in the, in the solution to participate. Then we're going to take a look at the charge on both sides of the equation and we're going to balance the charge by adding electrons to whatever side we need to add. And we're going to do that for both half reactions. Then we're going to balance the electrons gained in one reaction by the electrons lost in the other reaction, and we're going to do that by multiplying and then adding the reactions together. Once we have both reactions added together, we're going to cancel anything that's common to both sides, much like an algebra equation. We'll just look and we'll see what's common. All of the electrons should cancel and disappear, and anything else that we have common to both sides will disappear also. So that's the plan anyway. Let's jump in and do one of these guys. So here we have S2O3, it's got a charge of negative 2 plus oxygen, chlorine with a charge of negative 1, yields Cl negative plus S4O6, 2 negative. So you know this is happening in an acidic solution because your, your problem in your book should, should, number one, should tell you. When you're doing these reactions, it should... Um, tell you if you're dealing with acid or base, uh, you know, aqueous solution that this is happening. But you know it's, an, it's a solution, a water solution, an aqueous solution um, in general because of all these ions everywhere. Everything's already dissociated. Um, so again, you don't pull these ions off the shelf out of bottles. They're dissociating uh, from, you know, from the uh, parents' compounds that you're, 